Greece. This was an opportunity to actually finally have a tax agreement with Spain, not just on issues relating to tax information exchange, but also on unilateral uh, relief of double taxation and all sorts of other opportunities for dispute resolution between the two uh, competent authorities on taxation, between the two state authorities on taxation. For Gibraltar, the irritation on taxation is that Spain goes around the world saying these things which are absolutely untrue, in particular the idea that mm -hmm. Gibraltar does not cooperate in the exchange of information, something that we already do under existing European Union directives and indeed other supranational rules such as the multilateral uh, convention of the OECD and other G20 rules. So let's have a look at some of the details in the treaty. Among the big changes, non-Spanish nationals will be treated as Spanish tax residents for four years after leaving Spanish tax residency. For people who uh, live in Spain and might be returning to Gibraltar for a number of reasons, among them Brexit, is this bad news? It's not bad news at all. You talk about returning to Gibraltar, you must therefore be talking about uh, Gibraltarians. A Gibraltarian will not be under the Spanish tax net for another five years. In other words, a year after ratification and four years after that. So five years before you are stuck with the rule that you will continue to be taxed as a Spanish uh, citizen for four years. So this is a very, very good deal indeed because it allows people up to five years from now to be able to ensure that they're not caught by the Spanish tax net in future. Although if you are living in Spain, you are presently governed by Spanish domestic rules and you are presently subject to taxation. This agreement doesn't do that. If uh, a spouse or a dependent relative of a Gibraltarian is living in Spain, the individual would be considered as taxable in Spain. That means that an individual genuinely living in, Gibralt in Gibraltar could end up being taxable in Spain. Is that? No, that's not, th that's not the, the case. If a Gibraltarian or a person living and working in Gibraltar lives and works in Gibraltar, they will be taxed in Gibraltar. But if there are evidential uh, you know, disputes as to whether or not that person actually lives in Gibraltar, then one of the things that will determine where that person actually lives is where their centre of vital interest is. Now, that's what the, the model treaties talk about, the centre of vital interest. Determining your centre of vital interest in a human sense means where are your loved ones? Where do your loved ones live? Do you actually live with your loved ones? This is a way of trying to work out whether somebody is cheating a revenue authority in any place in the world, and that's how it's been translated into this treaty, in keeping with the existing rules in Spanish law. But is there a risk that people genuinely living in Gibraltar could be caught in the net in some way? Not at all. I think people who are genuinely living in Gibraltar are never going to trip the wires that's going to bring them into mm. dispute between the Gibraltar and Spanish authorities. But mm. of course we, we must understand that there are many people who are not genuinely living in Gibraltar. There are lots of people who are actually genuinely living in Spain and pretending for tax purposes to live in Gibraltar. Now, we cannot condone that and I was surprised to see yesterday that uh, the Social Democrats seemed to be saying that the Spanish revenue has been right all along and that there are a huge number of uh, Gibraltarians who are living in Spain, not paying Spanish taxes and pretending to live in Gibraltar. Well, the government of Gibraltar cannot condone that. Neither do we think it is the case that, 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 that there are so many of those people. And if there is a perception that there are concessions made in the tax treaty by the UK, who's, who's the party who signed the treaty, of course, uh, and this is perhaps uh, the price for Gibraltar not becoming an obstacle in the Brexit process. What would you say to that? I would say that whoever puts that interpretation is completely wrong. Look, let, let's be very clear about what's happening here. Gibraltar has seen an opportunity to finally do a tax treaty with Spain. Most in the finance center think that this is actually a very good thing that opens potential areas of business for Gibraltar and clears areas of international business that have been closed to us uh, before. In fact, if anybody thinks that a cabinet led by me is going to make any concessions to Spain, they are very, very wrong. When I say not one breath of air, not one drop of water, not one grain of sand, I mean it. But look, if you were to think that perhaps Fabian Picardo had lost uh, his senses with uh, so much Brexit, you also have to believe 
that Michael Yamas and Albert Mena and Joseph Garcia have lost their senses. And if we bring to the Gibraltar cabinet a tax treaty that makes concessions, then you have to believe that Joe Bosano, who has not been involved in the negotiation, but when he looks at the agreement, is also going to lose his senses. There are no concessions in this tax treaty. We would not have done concessions to Spain in a tax treaty or in any other document. And Joe Bosano would not sit in a cabinet of a government that was making these concessions. Let's be clear about this. The tough guys, when it comes to concessions and defending Gibraltar's interests, are in the GSLP and in the Liberals, not in any other party in town.